The healthcare detective Frank Lalle has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines. He joins us when he can. The topic is measles. Hey, Frank, how are you? Uh, well, I don't have measles, and that's a, that's the good news. Yeah, um, you having measles would be very terrible. It's everybody else. Would, uh, I, I have no immune system, by the way, because exactly. I have a stem cell transplant, and I, I am, have yet to be – so I have no, no immune system. I have yet to get immunized, which will happen in about a week. So, um, But look, measles is a dangerous virus. Uh, it, it once killed 400 to 500 Americans a year, mostly children. Then about 20 years ago, you know, thank goodness, we got a safe and 97% effective vaccine that wiped out measles as a public health threat in the United States. Nice story, right? But today, (laughs) I have bad news. Because of lax libertarian laws and gross anti-vaccination misinformation, measles has again emerged as a threat to your kids and to you. This winter, measles has spread like wildfire in 10 states from Washington state to New York state. Plus, a couple of cases have sprung up in Massachusetts and Connecticut. Connecticut's head of vaccinations, Kathy Kudish, she's terrific, told me in an exclusive interview for Robin Hood Radio that Connecticut had only three measles cases all last year, but we've had two in New Haven County alone in January. Both are adults who appear to have gotten infected overseas. It's kind of well known that countries like Israel, Ukraine, there are others, are hotbeds of measles. You travel there, you can get the virus, you bring it back. The highly contagious measles virus spreads through the air, and it can linger for an unusually long hour or two. Now, catch this. That means an unvaccinated person has a 90% chance of catching the disease by walking into an empty room where an infected person coughed or sneezed hours ago. Now, let's imagine that room is a classroom where one, in, one kid out of four isn't vaccinated, or, or it could be a church or a community center, your local grocery store. What's more, people, the infected people don't realize they're contagious because you're contagious four days before they get a telltale fever or a rash, and four days after the rash disappears. So measles is awfully tricky. At first, a a patient has flu-like symptoms, and they think, well, it's just a flu or a bad cold. But that's followed by a fever that can spike to 105, that's dangerous, and a rash that begins on the face and spreads everywhere. At its worst, measles can lead to pneumonia in one in 20 children. Deafness, blindness have also occurred, and death to one child in a thousand, worst case. So in the 90s, you can imagine, I mean, parents, you remember, they rushed to get their kids vaccinated. All 50 states passed laws requiring children to be vaccinated to attend the state public schools, at least the public schools. And the vaccination movement worked. (laughs) It all but eradicated measles. So guess what, Joe? In a way, it worked too well. Clear so far? Totally clear. And I also remember being old that, uh, you know, we, we, these were vaccinations we had to get, we just, it, was, it wasn't negotiable. And I fully understand uh, what has happened. But the, from a public health standpoint, there isn't, you, you know, it's, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little baffled. Yeah. Well, here's, uh, here's what happened. It, it, the vac- actually, by eliminating the fear of, of measles, right? Right. So, okay, so the max- that vaccination movement, very effective, it gave rise to the anti-vaccination movement. So with seemingly nothing to fear from measles, right? Nobody gets that anymore. Parents began to fear the vaccine itself after it was falsely linked to autism. And that began in around 1998. And that's a and false the fa- link? That's the link. And, it, and I'll tell you about it a little bit, a little bit in more detail. Okay. Because there's a false logic here. And it goes like this. Kids, kids get vaccinated against measles, mumps, and rubella, right? But nobody gets those childhood diseases anymore. Instead, more kids are getting autism. Oh, wait a second. 
maybe it's the vaccine that's causing the autism. The Stanford Medical School, this thing has taken hold, this reasoning. The Stanford Medical School now sees a 5% decrease in the number of children getting vaccinated and a 300% increase in measles. Then there are three forces driving this anti-vaccination movement. Misinformation, lax laws, and poor leadership. So let's start with the misinformation about autism. I really looked into this in detail this week. The false link between childhood vaccinations and autism traces to a phony, completely phony, 1998 study of 12 patients, only 12 patients. And I'm not the only one saying this. That study is one of the biggest frauds in medical history. Furthermore, preventive disease specialist Rob Cohen says that a key study of 537,000 kids showed that autism struck nearly 10% of the children who were, drumroll please, the children who were not vaccinated well, rather than the kids who were vaccinated, right? Yeah. So, so, so Dr. Cohn told me, if there was a link between vaccinations and autism, none of the unvaccinated kids should have developed the autism, let alone more of them developing autism. So there is no link. And if you want to know more, Dr. Cohn's a great source on this. If you want to learn more, go to his podcast, Demo Crises, and, and you'll learn more facts. But yet this fear of, of vaccinations among a vocal minority of voters has led to very lax state laws. An astonishing 17 states allow parents to refuse to vaccinate their kids for personal reasons, just personal philosophical reasons. And they can still send their kids to the public schools at least. And 47 states, that's all except California, Mississippi, and West Virginia, allow parents to refuse to vaccinate for religious reasons. Now, New York, Massachusetts, and Connecticut have relatively strict rules, thank goodness. California does grant exemptions for medical or religious reasons. That's very common in this country. But otherwise, otherwise, every child must be vaccinated to attend any Connecticut school, any public school, any private school, even the colleges. Okay, that's excellent. And as a result, around 97% of Connecticut school kids are vaccinated. And finally, uh, causing this problem is poor leadership from the top down. One reason social media is a cesspool of anti-vaccination crap is that President Trump has once again shown his willful ignorance by tweeting against vaccinations nearly two dozen times. And by the way, he's not the only one. He's joined by people like Katie Couric, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. There are others. So look, that didn't really stun me. I mean, Trump's ignorance, I've, I've gotten used to that. What stunned me when I was doing this report, Jill, is the number of local leaders who didn't want to speak to me for this report. These are, pe these are people who favor vaccinations at the county level, at a nearby hospital, at a big pediatric practice. They all wouldn't talk to me for, and get this, quote unquote, fear of offending anyone. Right. And that, yeah. what, what you just, this is, this is, yeah. This is the real leadership vacuum. This is this is the terrifying part, because if you go off the record with a bunch of normal people, they will say things that make perfect sense. However, you cannot it, it is very difficult to get them to just say, hey, sit down, shut up and do this, which is right. I'm sorry. Leadership has a certain element of sit down, shut up, and to do this. We've got yeah. this. You know, or, 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 look, we're listening to you. We understand your concerns, but here are the facts. That's the that, better way to approach it. But let's, but be very not, clear about, let's be very clear about this. I mean, at the state level, Kathy Kudish and had that team, she was terrific. And, and she, you know, set up an interview with me right away. She wanted to talk about it, and she was great. Uh, but And let's be clear, at this local level, I mean, this pediatric uh, practice, my goodness, 
But let's the, the also offen- the offense. The offense is not speaking up for public health. That's the part that's baffling. But when you get names, you know, throw, remove the president. We know that that's a lightning rod. But if you right. take RFK Jr., I right. mean, come on. Yeah, Every, you would, you, 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 it was surprising to see him pop up, but there he was. No, no, and no. Because Katie, Katie Couric, who's you know, who is but this has been an issue. Colon cancer uh, is you know has, has these, voiced concerns about vaccinations that just aren't uh, aren't founded. Well, really here not. here is the complication, and I just I wanted to ask you about this. I hope yeah. we've got enough time. You may or may yeah. not have information. If you don't, just say I don't no, have no, any information. Um, in veterinary medicine. What you can do, and the, the, the rabies is always, you know, there are rabies rules. you got to have a rabies shot. Now, if your dog is ancient and about to expire from a disease, and there are some exemptions, but what you have to do and what you can do is get a titer. Not right. just for rabies, for everything. So, so and, and that is you, you, you are checking the blood, you're drawing blood, and you are right. checking whether the person or in this case, creature, has the resistance to distemper, these things. Sure. And let's, let's, get to, let's get to the, let's get, that's, that's, let's get to the bottom line. Every parent or grandparent should get their kids vaccinated at 12 to 15 months and again at four or five years of age, okay, before they go into school. And you should get vaccinated yourself if you're not vaccinated unless, and here's the unless, unless you're pregnant or you have an autoimmune disorder, disorder or cancer, then don't, then, then don't do it. Otherwise, make sure you're vaccinated and get your kids vaccinated. Virtually all health insurance plans cover the cost. Otherwise, you'll pay around 75 bucks for one shot. That's not so bad. Adults only need one shot. Peter Dupriel at Salisbury Pharmacy, who always makes sense to me, said, look, if you don't vaccinate, you're risking the health of your children, your family, and your community, (laughs) right? We're all in this together, folks. I I think we all understand that. And Kathy Kudish at the state urges any parents who have concerns, they can be legitimate worries. You see the stuff on the internet, on social media, you see it on TV. You have concerns and worries. Good. Sit down with your pediatrician block out a good period of time and get the facts because here are the facts our safe and effective vaccines will protect your kids the vaccines will not harm your kids they'll protect you against these childhood diseases and measles can kill so protect your kid and protect yourself and protect the community yeah that just seems like a reasonable uh place to start a conversation it, it, you know, the other thing I came across, this is settled law. There was a case back in 1911 that went to the Supreme Court. There was a guy who didn't want to get vaccinated against smallpox. And the Supreme Court said, no, I'm sorry. There is a public interest here that everyone be vaccinated so a disease doesn't spread. And here we are facing the same kind of epidemic in this country. You, you pick up the newspapers, and I have, and nearly every day there's a story about another outbreak. And as I said, there are cases in New York State uh, among Orthodox uh, Jewish communities. That's one hotbed. Amish communities, that's another hotbed. But out on the West Coast, it's people with philosophical reasons. You know, they fear gluten. <laughs> they fear a whole bunch of other things. And they, they fear vaccines. And you've got classrooms now where... One kid out of four is not vaccinated. If that kid gets the measles somehow, that spreads in that school. In emergency situations, and this has already happened in New York State, it's happened in Connecticut. In emergency situations, the state comes in and closes, essentially closes up the school. They go in, they take any kid who isn't vaccinated, they take them out of school for at least 21 days until the outbreak passes. Because one unvaccinated, one unvaccinated kid who gets who gets the measles can then infect 15 other unvaccinated kids so you can, in a school that's like that's like throwing a match yeah. into a into a into a into a gallon of gasoline <clears throat> yeah so yeah so i think you know so look the the it's pretty clear the amazing thing about this is very clear you've got a vaccine that's safe it's 97% effective 
if you get the disease that that vaccine protects you against, that really is harmful. It can cause your kid to have a pneumonia. It could threaten him or her with death. So come on, please sit down with your pediatrician. If you have concerns, get them resolved and get your kids vaccinated. Thank you, Frank. Healthcare detective and the health correspondent for Parade. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcare detective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also, look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online and in stores. <laughs>